Alright, welcome back to Cricket Today on this Monday morning. I'm your host, Liam McCallion, also known as the Stats Guy. I'm here with Marcus Barzano, who's still loving the cricket over the weekend, even though there was a few washouts. How you going, Marcus? Yeah, good. Didn't get to see much cricket. I know. Did you go down you know, to your local, local is, ground just to check out a few games? <laughs> I couldn't even got rained out. Mate, oh yeah, so, true. I, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't even play. So, oh, um, filthy. Hopefully, they've got some more cricket throughout this week. Absolutely, and we've also got Leo again in his Renegades top. He was uh, filthy. They couldn't get on last night. How you going, Leo? Yeah, well, I'm. I'm good. I, I was able to get on over the weekend. Oh uh, really? A, yeah, T20 yesterday. We were able to win by 110 runs. So, Is that in the game wraps oh, yeah. today? Uh, what What was your score, Leo? Just to... uh, I made 11. I think of about. Nine balls, I think it oh, was. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, I came striker. in at the end. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Very yeah. nice. And he, uh, yeah, so what, we'll have to figure out. I reckon if Leo or Marcus uh, play, we should do the super coach scores. Add up some super coach scores. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon that'd be pretty fun. Wouldn't uh, be many for me. Yeah, uh, you got At least you're over 100 strike, right? I, I reckon take that. <laughs> Better than Finchie sometimes lately. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's true. <laughs> uh, today, obviously, we've t- talked about this last week. Best time of year, Aussie summer cricket is back. Wish summer would come around a bit quicker in uh, Melbourne and Adelaide, uh, though, because or Victoria and Adelaide, because the rain is killing us with the Big Bash. Uh, today, we're going to wrap up a strange weekend of the Big Bash with uh, one game, two being sort of washed out. Uh, we're going to have a look at the scores, the best uh, performers and super coach players. Uh, an upcoming match preview for the game tonight, I believe, is the Hurricanes versus the Sixers, which will be a pretty good game, I reckon. Uh, and then that's going to include some our, uh, some of our signature yeah and ahs throughout the show, as well as some predictions and super coach players for tonight's game. So let's get right into it, lads. Why not uh, have a look at the game wrap and some yeah and ahs uh, brought to you by Leo, as always. So the Sydney Sixers uh, versus Melbourne Renegades game on Friday night. Leo, what, what happened there with the scores? Yeah, so the Sixers came out strong, making one, uh, six for 175. And yeah, the Renegades, valiant effort. Um, yeah. The Big Chief was amazing. They made seven for 167. What did you boys make of this game? Yeah, I think we'll go, Mark and I will go through the best performers and uh, yeah, stats and super coach as we always do. So Steve Smith, obviously, uh, we talked him up. There was a big year now on our show on uh, Friday. We, he was going to make or break this team. Is he going to... Uh, come in quickly uh, for that one game and dominate, and he did. So what did he, what did he have? 61 of 42 balls. He was absolutely awesome. Super coach score of 96. So uh, although a lot of people didn't pick him for that first week, you could have sneakily just picked him just to get that quick 61, uh, 96 score, and he probably would have went up in price and you would have, could even get someone even better. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, what did you think about Smithy, uh, Marcus? Yeah, I think I was, I was really impressed um, just the way, he, the way he handled it, like open the batting, come in, um, and just yeah, just impressed in the first first uh, twenty twenty Big Bash game. So can't ask for much more. Yeah, before he leaves for the test match. Yeah, absolutely. He, I, I, he just came in like without even having trained too much in the yeah T twenty world. I feel that there's not many players in the world I reckon that can do that. Uh, then the chief, as Leo mentioned, he's going to be a cult figure I reckon in this podcast because he's absolutely awesome. He was awesome last year. Uh, what did he have? Two for twenty one and uh, fifty one off thirty balls. He was if. Uh, the Renegades won this. He was the clear man of the match. He got 151 super coach mm. all on his own. I think that's the score of the uh, round so far. Even got more than Munro, who got 134 when he made 99. So uh, the Chief was absolutely awesome, Marcus. It, yeah, it just shows that he's he's almost a must have. Like I yeah. uh, have him my super coach team. Yeah. I think we've mentioned him before because he he delivers with both the ball and the bat. Um, and and we mentioned that he's a very good fielder as well. Um, yeah, he's just but, awesome. I was I was filthy. I didn't put him in my side. I was like, oh, 158. Oh, he's going to be worth 200 and 250 in the next couple of weeks, I reckon. He's going to be flying. I, even last night when he bowled, I know it was a uh, dodgy pitch, but he's still looking pretty good. Got a wicket as well. So he's at, on absolute fire. Uh, then we'll just quickly finish off with some of the other performers. you got Jake Fraser McGurk. 48 off uh, 24 balls. He was really good. I, I don't know what his super coach mm. price is. Do you guys know? What JFM's super coach price is? Oh, he was at sixty two thousand at the start. Sixty two, um, okay. So yeah, yeah he'd be yeah. he'd be going think, up. I think it's gonna be a nice little bench. cash cow. Yeah, it'll be a great yeah. cash cow, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we got Dwarshus, who probably wouldn't be that too expensive as well. He got three for thirty six, uh, with a super coach score of seventy nine. So anything I think I've mentioned before, anything over a fifty super coach score uh, is pretty solid. So they're both in the seventy, so they did really well there. Uh mm. then talking about the renegades in this match, Leo, uh, you got a yeah now for us? Yeah, I do. Just this is was my thought, I guess, watching this. Uh, the Renegades blew this big time. Yeah, nah, gents. Or oh, what do you reckon, Marcus? Uh, I'm going to say nah. 
because I, I just I wouldn't have expected the Renegades to even go out there and win in the first place. Yeah, I mean, they they started off with the bat uh, poorly. Um, if it wasn't for Jake Fraser McGurk, um, they wouldn't have been in the position that they were to even possibly go out and win game, mm. win the game. Um, so I was really really impressed with him. Um, just checked just checked for you lads. It was sixty. Uh, Two and a half thousand. Jeez, so he'll um, he'll rock it up uh, in Supercoach surely this week. Yeah, if you want to pick him up in Supercoach, but oh, yeah, I'm gonna go no. What about you, Stasco? Yeah, I'm gonna say I'll say yeah. They had a really big chance to uh, win that. I reckon just needed someone to perform with the bat uh, a bit higher. I was a bit disappointed with Finchie. He did it. He did this a bit last season where in the past he just goes from ball one, but he's looked a bit scratchy. Couldn't really get that big strike rate that we're so used to seeing from him. Uh, and I feel like that could have been... He still made a salt. What did he make? 30-something in the end. But, uh, yeah, it was just filthy that they couldn't have some quick runs in the top order, and Jake Fraser, McGurk, and Sutherland, I reckon, would have got him over the line if if they just made a few more runs at the top of the order. I know they conceded the 175, which is a pretty big score, but I think, yeah, they've put up a solid effort, and I'm, we might have to uh, have a look at our predictions uh, <laughs> over TikTok. I think people still get, get around to us on TikTok, guys. If you think... Uh, we uh, predicted the Renegades uh, being last was wrong because that's uh, what a lot of people are doing at the moment. <laughs> uh, what do you reckon about your own year now there, Leo? Yeah, I think I agree with your stats, Guy. I think the Renegades blew this big time against the Sixers. I just thought um, the fielding for the Renegades was appalling. I don't know how much you saw of it, but yeah. Maddinson was terrible in the field. Yeah. Jordan Cox. I didn't think about that, actually. just so yeah. lazy Jordan in Cox, the field. Yeah. John O'Wells and even John O'Wells and Mackenzie Harvey, fantastic fielders. They fumbled a few. Yeah. Um, and then you look at Jordan Silk, who basically won them the game with some yeah, amazing wow. fielding efforts. And I, I reckon the Renegades let in 10 to 15 runs in the field and the margin is eight runs. So that's fielding. that's why I've put that in as the yeah, end. No, I just thought if their fielding was at a level that, that in, it's just bare minimum, right, that yeah. they win that game. Um, because with the bat, although there were some scratchy signs with a bit, a few batsmen probably panicking um, yeah. and not performing. Like, you know, I thought John O'Wells was panicked a little bit. Jordan yeah. Cox, he can go back to England. I didn't think he was too great. <laughs> oh, um, I got that. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have a good day, but, did he? Uh, um, no, he, yeah, he finished, was a, finished on a duck and wasn't yeah, great in the could, field. Him, you could tell he was just like there for one game before the cop came back. And yeah, I just thought Renegades should like having the result they got to with Chief getting it so close that it, it was a massive missed opportunity. And last night gets cancelled. So they could have been, mm. they could be 1 0 right now, but they're not. I so. know. Uh, Renegades, uh, yeah, we'll be filthy that one. But yeah, Sixers did bat really well. Uh, right, we'll quickly go to the next game, which uh, we don't have much to talk about there. Unfortunately, got rained out in Adelaide. It was the same as in Victoria. It was just absolutely pouring uh, all of Saturday and then, yeah, towards Saturday night. So Adelaide Strikers versus Brisbane Heat rained out. I think, yeah, both teams were pretty filthy. I think that would have been a, probably the match of the weekend. I was really excited for that one. Uh, so we'll quickly mm. skip past that one. Uh, two last night's game was the Melbourne Renegades played again against the Perth Scorchers in Geelong. Now, it wasn't raining all afternoon, and then there was a just a pitch error. The rain got under the uh, covers or something like that. Ricky Ponting called it before the game saying, this ball's going to do a bit. He's always pretty spot on in the in the commentary. Uh, and then, yeah, Leo, what happened there with the scores? Yeah, so you know it's a dangerous pitch when the Renegades have the scorches two for 30 of uh, 6.5 <laughs> yeah. overs. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that, that, that pitch was doing all sorts and, um, mm. yeah, just – it was weird. It's just a really unfortunate scenario, isn't it, lads? Co- yeah, I, I just I'm filthy. Maybe we don't have games in Geelong. Just there's been a few times <laughs> it's happened down there. Uh, I'm filthy. There was two games in a row that we didn't get to see, and yeah, there was a few people that would have travelled down all the way to, down to Geelong. I say all the way down to Geelong. It's not that far, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, if I went down there, uh, I don't know an hour down the road from where we are, I would have been yeah filthy. Uh, yeah, what do you reckon about that pitch, Marcus? Well, it was similar to sort of what happened in the you hear about what happened in the PM eleven game where the yeah. the covers blew off in the storm overnight overnight and then they they couldn't get any play in. But no, I think they they did the right thing by abandoning yeah. abandoning the game um, because you could just see the look on like even Quinton yeah the cock, face, he just like he was being told off by the <laughs> school teacher yeah. back in school again yeah. Um, and, and Josh Inglis definitely wasn't happy. Um, I'm not going to repeat what he said because there's some coarse language in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're, 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 we're PG, PG podcast, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, they did the right thing by calling it off. Yeah, I, I would have been filthy if I was to cock. He's come in for one game, flown all the way over, and then he's got to head back to uh, 
I forgot where he, it might be going. No, back I think to India. he's. I think he's. Oh still, no, sorry, South Africa. I no, I think he's said, still around for the big match, isn't he? He is, but he's going back quickly for to South Africa for a, a game of some sort, and then he's coming back again. So he went from India to Abu Dhabi to Australia, back to South Africa, and then he's coming back to Australia. What I what I read uh, last night, which is a bit bit of, and then he was rocking up, and he didn't want to break his fingers when the ball's going everywhere. So. As a yeah, he's he's been a keeper and doesn't want to just rock up with uh, those balls flying everywhere off that really dodgy pitch. It was very, it would have been exciting to watch, to be fair, but uh, yeah, probably a bit dangerous. Fair enough. Uh, Leo, for uh, yeah, this have you got a bit of a year now for us? Yeah, just, oh, for just the weekend. The last actually, two, yeah. yeah, just the big story of the weekend, I guess, and making it super coach relevant. Um, but yeah, BBL yep. super coach is off to an absolutely nightmare oh. start. Yeah, nah. You go, Marcus. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think everyone's sure. going to agree on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, with with two games rained out, um, especially with like the Brisbane Heat, uh, oh. we're supposed to play three games, and you know we've we've talked about players with big price tags um, just not getting on the pitch. Uh, so you know it's it's a bit of a tough start, but that's what you come to expect with cricket. Yeah, anything can happen. Yeah, I don't remember it happen very often where you get two. Uh, washouts over the same weekend of the Big Bash. We still usually get pretty good weather. And then uh, I think uh, Leo's written in a few of these, but you got Matt Short. I have him. I was filthy. He's 244000 One of the, I think he's the second most expensive player on uh, in Supercoach, BBL Supercoach, and he doesn't even get a game. And he, they only had one game this week, so filthy with that. Also, Jai Richardson as well. He had a big price tag. Uh, I'm not sure what his price was, Leo, but he he would have yeah could have dominated against the Renegades uh, last night. That's why you picked him in your uh, Jai's gaming team. Uh, yeah, what, who did you have uh, and captain I can see here, Leo? Yeah, so had Jai, as you mentioned, he was 247,000. So oh, he's more ideal. than short. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, and Hardy is captain. So, yeah, not a great start. Um, but even I saw Sutherland, I think, because he took two wickets or one wicket last night, he got an extra 20 points as well. So, if someone has captained him, that's an absolute master stroke. Yeah, yeah that's lucky. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so 177 he ended up. Oh, yeah, geez. Uh, we'll start one. From so. the two games. Oh, sorry, one and a tenth of a game. Yeah. <laughs> one and six overs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. All right, lads. So, uh, yeah, that's enough about uh, those annoying washouts. Uh, let's have a look at the upcoming match tonight with the uh, Hobart Hurricanes taking on the Sydney Sixers. So, the Sixers play again. Uh, I just want to quickly talk about my favorite spinning combination. I think Leo chucked the air in this last week. Uh, the best spinning combination, not just because they are fun to watch, but I think they're going to be really good this season, of Paddy Dooley and Peter Hatsoglu. Uh, I just think, I've said this before, they're going to be a, a bit of a cult hero on this show for me. Their arms are going to be flailing everywhere. You're going to if, put them on from both ends, I reckon. So you got well, Hilly, Dooley one end, Hatsoglu on the other end, and just the decent spin, pretty good pace uh, off the wicket. I think they'll be pretty fun to watch. Uh, what do you guys reckon about that one? <laughs> Yeah, no, I definitely yeah. agree. Um, it can, can be confusing at times, but yeah. yeah, it should be a great game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get into some predictions. I'll quickly, I'll go for you first, uh, Leo. Who, who do you reckon in this one, Hurricane Sixers? Yeah, I think Sixers still win. Um, I think Steve Smith is a big out, but um, the man we're going to mention in a second, Jordan Silk, is going to face more deliveries most likely. Enrique's was, you know, he did enough against the Renegades, made a solid yep. 40. Um I just think, yeah, they're going to have enough for this Hurricane side who yeah, we haven't seen yet. So a bit of a more of an unknown, I guess, with them. Yep. Uh, Marcus, you're going, going against him here. Yeah, well, well, I don't want to spoil what you said, but I'm going to go against um, just, just purely because I uh, didn't want another whitewash. But <laughs> I am kind of optimistic about the Hobart Hurricanes. Okay. I don't know why. i got a soft spot for them. Yep. Um, probably because nobody loves them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but... No, I'm excited what they can bring. Um, both with the ball and the bat, they've got uh, some good dynamics in there. Uh, players who can smash 50 off 20 balls. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and they've also got some exciting players with ball in hand. Um, so, And I wasn't very impressed with the Sixers, yep. and I think losing losing Steve Smith as well um, is, is a big blow, uh, especially to that top order, just purely just to get settled in and face those first couple overs when the ball's moving, yep. um, especially in Tasmania. Um, I, I think 
the Hurricanes could cause an upset. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't mind that. I, I think this would be pretty close. As you mentioned, when you're taking Steve Smith out of that side, the Renegades probably yeah would have won. I, you, it would be interesting the next couple of games without Steve Smith, we'll get a real gauge of if the Sixers are still really good, just to see if uh, Philippi can sort of go on with, what did he make, 29, I'm pretty sure, if he can go on towards that 50, or as uh, Leo mentioned, Silk. So I still want to back the Sixers. I think uh, that were my title pick. I, I was a bit worried about them on Friday night, but I still think, yeah, they're a lot better than the Hurricanes. The only thing is they, the Hurricanes are pretty solid at home, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if the Sixers yeah, can get over the line here, but I'm going to tip the Sixers as well. Uh, Leo, so this is you've backed him up uh, from this one, and I really like this super coach pick. Who have you got as our super coach pick for tonight? Yeah, so yeah, we mentioned him, Jordan Silk, 133,000 yep. at the moment. Um, just a real reliable player. He hit 61 super coach points on Friday, 26 of 14, so he came in towards the end, added a few extra runs that proved vital. But not only that, his, his what you've put his stats go, probably the best fielder in the world. Um, if oh. he doesn't stop those – I think it was one early against the Renegades and one yep. in the last over. They don't win that game. Mm. So, nah. um, And that honestly proved the difference in the end, in my opinion at least, was the fielding. So, yep. um, And I heard Punna say that you know because he can do two skills really well, he's an, he's an all-rounder, and I completely agree. So Ooh, um, that's a, I think that's it's a great call. It, it's a bit of a yeah. sort of left field, I guess, super coach pick. But, yeah, I, I just think he's been so good for so long. So I'll back him yeah. in. Yeah, I, I think he's sort of been a bit underrated in the Big Bash because all the highlights of him on uh, all the socials are always him taking a blinder of a catch or stretching out his mm. long neck and his long arms to field a, uh, field a really good uh, ball in the outfield. But he's actually pretty pretty solid. They've just got a lot of big names. Uh, Sydney always have a, Sydney Sixers always have a lot of big names. He sort of, yeah, he gets a lot of 40s in the, during the season. And like you said, I think, like you said earlier during the predictions, Lee, I, I reckon he's going to face a lot more balls as well. So 133,000 could be a bit of a steal. If he can go on and make, what did you say? He made 26 off 14. If he can turn them into sort of 30, 40 runs, uh, just at least a cu- every couple of games, and he's going to be a very good pick. What do you reckon about him for Supercoach Marcus? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think, and especially being a good fielder in, in the short format, um, especially in, in BBL, uh, generally Australia is very good at fielding, but yeah. Jordan Silk is just in a world beyond. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of those some of those stops he made to stop some boundaries the other night were, was very impressive. Should we just bring him in as like a specialist twelfth man, just a specialist fielder when when uh, someone needs to go to the toilet or during the Boxing Day test <laughs> or or anything like that, or someone just fakes a fakes an injury and it's getting closer. Yeah, and... chuck chuck him in <laughs> chuck him in backward point. Yeah, we've, we've got some pretty good we've pretty good fielders true. like um even even Cam Green in in yeah. is impressive. Well, you know we know it was he can take a catch. True, as well true. In those positions, yeah, so. we're not lacking fielders in the uh, test team, but that, that would be pretty funny just to see him out there as a specialist uh, fielder. That'd be pretty cool. I'll probably start him short with the bat there, as Leo mentioned. He's actually been a really good, really good player over a few years now. All right, I think that's it for the show, lads. Uh, we've got through yeah all that Hurricane Sixes match. Praying that for some reason it doesn't get cold off with a dodgy pitch or rained out. Hopefully they play. I just want to see some cricket. Uh, but that's yeah, it. Weather's looking good. Weather's looking good? Okay, weather's there we go. Good, there yeah. we go. You can be a um, show meteorologist, I reckon, uh, Marcus. <laughs> um, all right, that's it for the Cricket Show today. Cricket Today Show. We'll be back with this tomorrow and daily. Uh, fingers crossed, no more washouts. Uh, so get right around the show. Subscribe on your podcast apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Like and review it, please. On And then get us around Get around us on all the socials. Chuck a follow and a like at Cricket Today. On all the socials at Cricket Today AU. Uh, that is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Uh, send in any questions via the socials. You want to bag us about the Renegades who look pretty solid, but they haven't got a win yet. So we'll see see how they go. So uh, yeah, comment anything you want on the socials. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you, Leo. Cheers, that's guy. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Uh, thanks, Marcus. No worries, that's good. Uh, thanks, Joe, behind the camera for doing all the producing, making us look awesome. And thanks to me. That is another episode of the Cricket Today Show. Done. We're out.